All right, let's talk Hackintosh. It's the ultimate DIY project for those who love Macos but want more control over their hardware or budget. Imagine having the sleek, intuitive interface of macOS running on a machine that you built with your own hands. It's a blend of creativity and technical prowess. Essentially, a Hackintosh is a custom-built PC running Apple's macOS. It's like having the best of both worlds, the flexibility of a PC and the elegance of macOS. It's the rebellious cousin in the Mac family turning heads and making you wonder how'd they do that. The process can be challenging, but the rewards are immense. The appeal is massive, and I totally get it. The sense of accomplishment when you see macOS booting up on your custom rig is unparalleled. First off, there's the cost. Apple products are known for their premium pricing, but with a Hackintosh, you can sidestep that. You can build a machine with superior processing power and graphics capabilities to an official Mac for a significantly lower price. This means you can allocate your budget more efficiently, investing in the components that matter most to you. Think about it. More cores, more RAM, more storage, and the graphics card of your choice. You're not limited by the configurations offered by Apple. This isn't just about saving money. It's about getting the best bang for your buck, tailoring a system precisely to your needs. Whether you're a video editor, a gamer, or a software developer, you can build a machine that fits your specific requirements. Then there's the customizability and upgradability. With a Hackintosh, you have the freedom to upgrade your hardware whenever you want. With a genuine Mac, you're often locked into the configuration you buy. This can be limiting, especially as your needs evolve over time. A Hackintosh, on the other hand, is built from standard PC parts, allowing you to upgrade as you see fit. This means your machine can grow with you, adapting to new software demands and technological advancements. One of the biggest headaches for Hackintosh builders has been NVIDIA graphics card compatibility. This issue has plagued the community for years, causing countless hours of troubleshooting and frustration. For years, NVIDIA had the most compelling options for powerful GPUs, but getting them to work with Macos was a saga filled with frustration. The allure of NVIDIA's performance was undeniable, yet the compatibility issues were a constant thorn in the side of Hackintosh enthusiasts. Back in the day, NVIDIA released web drivers for Macos, allowing their newer cards to function. These drivers were a lifeline for those wanting to harness the power of NVIDIA GPUs on their Macos systems. You could get a decent NVIDIA GPU, install the web drivers and enjoy a relatively smooth macOS experience. It was a golden era for Hackintosh users who preferred NVIDIA's hardware. The problems escalated as Apple began to favor AMD GPUs and introduced Metal, their own graphics API. This shift marked the beginning of a challenging period for those reliant on NVIDIA cards. As NVIDIA released new generations of GPUs, Hackintosh users were left out in the cold. The lack of updated web drivers meant that newer, more powerful cards were essentially unusable on Macos. The web drivers stopped updating, and newer cards like the RTX 2080 or RTX 3080 were incompatible. This left many users feeling abandoned and frustrated. Users were often stuck with older NVIDIA cards, or had to switch to AMD. This switch was not always smooth, as it required additional adjustments, and sometimes even new hardware purchases. It was a painful situation for many enthusiasts. The dream of a perfect Hackintosh setup with an NVIDIA GPU seemed increasingly out of reach, leading to a lot of heartbreak in the community. So, why did NVIDIA and modern Macos part ways? It's a mix of Apple's strategic decisions and the technical challenge of maintaining third-party drivers. Apple loves control, designing both hardware and software to work seamlessly together. Introducing third-party hardware, especially complex graphics cards, can disrupt this harmony. Apple's move towards its own Metal Graphics API was a big part of this. Metal is optimized for the hardware Apple chooses, primarily AMD GPUs and later their own M-Series Silicon. For NVIDIA, developing Macos drivers without Apple's collaboration is a tough sell, with a shrinking market. The result was a stalemate, leaving users with older NVIDIA cards or switching to AMD, Even before 2025, the Hackintosh community never gave up hope on NVIDIA. Leading up to this year, there were always efforts to make newer NVIDIA cards work on Macos. The development of bootloaders like OpenCore was a massive leap forward, improving stability and compatibility. 
Behind the scenes, developers were constantly experimenting, often with partial successes. The prevailing sentiment was cautious pessimism for modern NVIDIA cards. Most guides steered users towards AMD GPUs for a smooth experience on recent MacOS versions. Using an RTX 3070 or 4070 in MacOS was largely considered a pipe dream. The year 2025. Did the green dream finally come true? So, here we are. May 22nd, 2025. Has anything changed for NVIDIA GPUs on MacOS? The news is complicated, but there's a definite buzz in the air. It's not like NVIDIA suddenly released official drivers for MacOS. However, the Hackintosh community appears to have made significant strides through reverse engineering. A project, let's call it NV Meta Patcher, emerged, bridging the gap between NVIDIA's drivers and Apple's Metal API. Early adopters reported mixed but increasingly positive results, with actual Metal acceleration. It's not perfect, but for a community starved of NVIDIA support, even partial success feels monumental. The forums are buzzing with discussions and shared success stories. Cracking the code the simplified tech behind the supposed shift. How is this NVIDIA Meta Patcher working? The core challenge has always been getting NVIDIA GPUs to speak Apple's Metal language. Metal is a highly efficient dialect for graphics tasks, and AMD GPUs are fluent in it. NVIDIA cards primarily speak other languages like DirectX and CUDA. This breakthrough likely involves repurposing parts of NVIDIA's open-source Linux drivers and creating a translation layer. This layer translates Metal API calls into something NVIDIA hardware can understand. Another crucial aspect is handling the firmware and power management of these GPUs. The community developers had to reverse engineer how macOS manages AMD GPUs and mimic that behavior for NVIDIA cards. It's a testament to sheer dedication and brilliance if they've achieved even partial success. Real-world NVIDIA performance in MacOS 2025. How well do these new patches work? Early reports and benchmarks are a mixed bag, but there's excitement. Enthusiasts and professionals alike are diving into the data trying to make sense of the performance metrics. Some benchmarks show significant improvements while others are less impressive. For creative professionals, the initial results are promising. Graphic designers, video editors, and 3D artists are noticing smoother workflows and faster rendering times. This could be a game-changer for those who rely on heavy graphics processing. Users with RTX 3070 or 4070 report metal acceleration, smoother timeline scrubbing, and reduced render times. These improvements are particularly noticeable in applications like Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. However, performance isn't always matching what you'd get with an equivalent AMD card or in Windows. The differences can be subtle or significant depending on the task at hand. There are occasional stutters and graphical glitches. These issues can be frustrating, especially during critical tasks, but they are part of the growing pains of new software patches. When it comes to gaming, users report the ability to play previously unplayable games. Titles that were once off limits on MacOS are now accessible, opening up new possibilities for Mac gamers. Frame rates might not match Windows, and there might be driver-specific bugs. Gamers need to be prepared for some trial and error as they tweak settings for optimal performance. This isn't official polished support, it's an ongoing beta test driven by the community. Enthusiasts are sharing tips, troubleshooting advice and workarounds on forums and social media. Some applications work flawlessly, while others could be crash-prone. It's a mixed bag, and users need to be prepared for some instability. System stability can vary and performance might change with the next patch or macOS update. As the community continues to refine these patches, we can expect ongoing improvements and new challenges. Community Chatter User Triumphs and Tribulations with NVIDIA The Hackintosh forums and Reddit threads are buzzing with excitement and frustration. For every triumphant screenshot, there's a user detailing a frustrating battle with installation scripts. Success stories are heartwarming, with users sharing detailed guides and contributing to a growing knowledge base. However, the path is not smooth for everyone, with common issues like sleep-wake functionality and display output problems. The overall sentiment is cautious optimism mixed with realism. The troubleshooting threads are incredibly active, with users collectively trying to iron out the bugs. NVIDIA on Hackintosh 
a fleeting glimmer, or a sustainable dawn. The Hackintosh world is constantly shifting, and what works today might be broken by the next Macos update. The biggest challenge for the long-term viability of these patches is Apple itself. Each new macOS version can introduce changes that render existing patches useless. Without official support, the burden of maintenance falls on a small group of dedicated volunteers. Future NVIDIA GPU architectures could introduce new challenges. However, the Hackintosh community is resilient and ingenious. The NVM Etapatcher project has shown what's possible, and efforts will likely continue. It's a hard-won glimmer of hope, keeping the dream of an NVIDIA-powered Hackintosh alive.